Well, if things were bad for Labour, they were absolutely catastrophic for the Liberal Democrats. Voters deserted the party in their droves. Vince Cable was among the very well-known faces who lost their seats last night. A truly horrendous evening for a party that before the election was in government, of course. Well, I'm joined now to talk about all this by Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt and Labour's Fiona McTaggart, who held on to her seat in Slough. Or, well, you were Health Secretary, Jeremy, before the election. Are you still? Do you know? Well, technically, I am still remain Health Secretary until yeah. the Prime Minister decides who he wants to carry on being Health Secretary, whether it's me or someone else. But um, for the moment, yes, I am. We've already seen some of your Cabinet colleagues coming and going, keeping their posts. Would you like to keep yours? Well, I've always said it's the biggest privilege of my life to do this job, so I'd love to. But, um, you know, it's up to the Prime Minister now, so we have to wait and see what happens. We'll get on to your party's success in a moment. Uh, commiserations, Fiona. How do you feel? Well, I feel that the people of Britain said to Labour what we were offering wasn't good enough. Uh, whose fault is it then? Is it Ed Miliband's, as he suggested himself? Well, it's obviously partly leadership, but it's also, I think, the whole of the party needs to take responsibility. You can't just land the consequence of a result as bad as this on one leader. We all need to shape up and we all need to listen to what voters were saying, which was that they felt that we weren't reflecting their aspirations for themselves and their families. Were you complacent about Scotland? No, I don't think we were. I think we knew what was happening in Scotland. I think where we failed in Scotland was following the decision, which was close, to remain part of the United Kingdom. What we didn't do was offer a way of translating that desire into also making Scotland's voice more clearly heard in Westminster. I don't think we did that, and I think that was a pity and a mistake. But even so, the result, from your perspective, a surprise. Yeah, I think we did less well than we expected to. I mean, we did very, very badly, and we need to face up to that. Jeremy, on the flip side, the result, well, surely no one saw this coming, and the Prime Minister told us a couple of days ago he was nervous about what was going to happen. No one predicted it. No, they didn't, and I actually think there are lessons for all parties in what happened in Scotland, because I think the idea of a safe seat anywhere in the UK is, you know, buried now, um, because there were lots of people who five years ago in Scotland thought they had an absolutely solid seat. And I think that the electorate now, I don't think they're tribal in the way they used to be. I don't think they are sort of lifelong Labour, lifelong yeah. Conservative. And, you know, if something changes, if they don't think their MP is working hard in the area or if something changes in the national picture, they're willing to switch allegiances. And that's something I think all of us in Westminster need to understand. Yeah, there's an awful lot of people who switch their allegiances to UKIP and the Greens. Together, they polled five million votes across the country, and between them they have two MPs to show for it. Surely there's something wrong there? Well, I think there's... I'm a believer in the two-party system. Um, well, you would be. No, I'm a believer in it because I think it makes both parties accountable for their promises, and I recognise with the two-party system that there are going to be times when the Conservative Party is electorally very disadvantaged, um, and, and likewise for the Labour Party. But I think the rise of the small parties is a message to those of us in Conservative and Labour that we do have to think much harder about connecting with people because I think sometimes some of those smaller parties did a better job than us yes. at connecting with people and we have to think about that. Br briefly. But our first past the post electoral system doesn't actually enable people to make sure that their MP really reflects their ambitions. That's the problem. I'd like to ask, I mean, the Tories aren't immune from losing your own big beast, Esther McVeigh going, of course, uh, one of your Cabinet colleagues. But from the Labour point of view, Ed Balls has gone, Jim Murphy has gone, Douglas Alexander has gone. The complexion of the party is going to change radically. So who should lead it next? Well, my view is that we shouldn't focus on an individual. We should focus on a prospectus. It's going to have frankly. to be an individual, though, No, there it? does have to be an individual, that's true. But what we need to do is to actually ask those individuals who are looking for... Uh, votes for leadership, what the prospectus they have for the party. So, because so should it be the next they generation right who aren't associated with New Labour, who aren't associated with Miliband and Gordon Brown? I think it probably should so be the like next Chukra generation. Moon, perhaps. I'm not supporting any names okay. because I don't know whose name's going to be in the frame. But I do think that actually what I would quite like is to have a conversation with the voters before we pick on a leader. Okay. I'm not sure that there's going to be time to do that, which is a pity. Fiona, Jeremy, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.